hi everyone in this video we are presenting another proof of infinitude of primes by Hadi Furstenberg and he was uh, using topology so so in order to start the proof uh, we need to know some ideas from topological space this is just a refreshment many of you know about topological space and the structure of a topology so the definition goes like this so um, uh, for a topological space you need a set let it be x as a non-empty set and um, a topology or a topological structure in x is a family tau of subsets of x right so first of all um, the topology means we are finding a family of subsets okay x uh, which, which they satisfy some conditions so first of all the arbitrary union of the members of tau okay but tau is a family of subsets of x remember so if you take an arbitrary union of that that union has again belongs to that uh, top and second case finite intersections right we don't we are not um, making an arbitrary intersection but finite intersections of members of tau has also to be a member of tau right and thirdly we need phi and x are members of tau right that's the main mm, idea okay so this, these three conditions uh, uh, satisfies for a family of subsets of x then we call it topology over x on x so we will denote like is a tuple uh, x tau is called topological space example let x be a suppose uh, you want to know some general one example so let x be a set and uh, we just take x and phi right uh, by using third condition then this would be a topological space right so always try to identify or not that this tau uh, is an um, element of the power set of the power set of x right it's an element of right so basically a tau a family is a subset of power set of x right and uh, because of that it is an element of power set of power set of x okay so that's just uh, for your um, idea secondly what is mean by open sets in a topological space so open set means any members of the topology uh, that tau is called the uh, open set right okay so members of tau are called open sets now our aim to now what i'm going to do is um so in order to start the proof and all we need a topology uh, defined on z integers z so our aim to construct a topology on c right so we need to construct a topology on c so what is uh, we need we need a family of subsets uh, of z integers um, where it uh, act like a, a topology on z so let us consider one kind of such a tau so it is a family of subsets so it is all contained in z right so what is the condition either o is empty right or uh, this condition should satisfy so this is very important condition so we say um, O is an element of tau if for every a belongs to O there is a B right greater than 0 such that n a B is a subset of O right so what is this n a B that's your question right so this n a B is nothing but here it is the set a plus n B where n belongs to Z right it's like uh, an arithmetic progression right it's a two-way arithmetic progression right uh, a plus n B you have a st uh, okay a plus n b a and b are fixed n is varying over z so what is the what are the open sets in this uh, topology so open set means for every a belongs to o you need to find out a b positive right 
such that NAB should contain in O. That is the idea. So this property will satisfy every element in this top. Okay. So let's see whether this is a topology or not. So what's the first condition? Arbitrary union has to be in tau, right? So for this, consider OX, right? I am indexed uh, the family uh, using an indexing set, right? X can be any indexing set, right? Now, then I'm taking the union. So what I have to prove? I have to prove that whenever A belongs to the union of OX, I should find a B such that NAB has to be contained in this, right? So that's the idea. Then only we can prove that it is in the um, uh, tau. So let A belongs to uh, union, X belongs to I, O, X. That implies what? A belongs to union means A belongs to at least one of that um, uh, open set, right? For some X belongs to I. So from this, it is, we already know O, X is an open set. So there exists a B, right? such that b greater than 0 and nab is a subset of ox so nab is a subset of ox then ox is a subset of the union of ox definitely that is true that proves that uh, nab is a subset of union of ox that means union of uh, arbitrary union is open which is belongs to tau right the meaning is now we have to prove the arbit uh, finite intersection so in order to prove finite intersection, you don't only have to show that it is true for only two values, right? So let us take two open sets, O1 and O2. And what do you have to prove? Whenever A belongs to uh, O1 intersection O2, I have to exhibit a B uh, positive that uh, NAB is uh, contained in O1 intersection O2. That's our idea, right? So since uh, A belongs to the intersection of O1 and O2, that implies A is belongs to O1 and A is belongs to O2, right? And uh, because of that, we can exhibit uh, two numbers like there exists B1 and such the NAB1 subset of O1 and there exists B2 that NAB2 uh, subset of O2, right? So uh, we are getting this, right? Let, let, let us stop that and we can claim one important thing that NAB1 B2 is subset of O1 intersection O2. And why I am proving this? because um, then I have done because uh, if, I, if I can prove this claim then I got a B1 B2 such that NAB if you take B1 B2 as B NAB1 B2 is a subset of O1 intersection O2 so I proved uh, that O1 intersection O2 is a open set so I, I, have to, I have to prove this right for that I am taking an element from this um, NAB1 B2 so then we can see that it implies what? X is of the form A plus N B1 B2, right? A plus N B1 B2. And you look at the red circle, right? So N B1 is an, an, an integer, right? That proves that uh, X is belongs to N A B2, right? You can treat this as a number, as uh, some integer. So that proves that N A B2, you already know it is belongs to O1. That proves X belongs to O1, right? Yeah. Now, uh, yeah, uh, it be, this is O2, NAB2 subset of O2, so that is uh, uh, X belongs to O2. Similarly, if you like, if you write X equal to A plus NB2 B1, and this is an integer, so you can show that X belongs to NAB1, already we know that it is belongs to O2. So, X and uh, X is belongs to O1 and O2, that means X belongs to the intersection, O1 intersection O2. So, so that is, uh, so the claim is true because we started from here and we reached here. So what we can say, we got a B such that B1, B2, our NA, B1, B2 subset of O1 intersection O2, that means the in, finite intersection is also open. So it is a topology, right? Uh, phi and uh, X are already there, okay? So it is a... Um, uh, topology so tau is described above is a topology on x now we observe two things this is very important that is first thing is any non-empty open set is infinite okay so any non-empty open set is infinite why why it is uh, so so if O is not empty then we know that any then definitely a number will belongs to O, right? A belongs to O. 
So that that implies there is, is a b greater than zero such that n a b is subset of o, right? B is positive. So if you look at the n a b with the b positive, definitely is an infinite set, right? Because n is varying, right? And b is positive, also not it's non-zero. That proves uh, uh, and uh, a, a, a set which contains an infinite set definitely has to be infinite. So O is infinite. So any non-empty open set is infinite. Okay, so that's very important. Now the second thing we have to note: any set N A B is closed as well. Then you may think that I haven't proved that N A B is open. So we will prove that in our um, in in the coming slide. All right? Any set N A B is closed as well. So first we are going to prove that it is closed. Right? And definitely we will use uh, the openness. So I should have to done it before, but uh, we will uh, do it when it necessary. Okay. So for this, we need to prove a result, right? In order to prove NAB is closed, we need to prove basically two results. First is NAB is open. I have to prove, and I also I have to prove that this particular identity, right? Uh, equality. So N A B equal to Z difference, right? Union I from one to B minus one, N A plus I B. It seems to be a, um, clumsy, but this is not uh, difficult. You can see N A. This is A plus I. Just uh, the index is A plus I, and I is moving from one to B minus one. You will see how do you, how do you get these things. So if you delete this from Z, you will get N A B. That's that's the that need, you need to prove it. Okay. So first thing, the one kind of inclusion, first inclusion, I have to prove that N A B is a subset of uh, this uh, right hand side. So I take from element from N A B, then um, definitely it belongs to Z because N A B is a subset of Z, right? Subset of integers. And uh, and if I can prove that t does not belongs to this i am done right this particular union i am done so for that i assume the contrary that t belongs to this union okay so if t belongs to this union what happens then t belongs to at least one i right such that at na plus ib t belongs to na plus ib for some i 1 to b minus 1 now if it is belongs to this then it is of the form a plus i plus m b right some uh, integer vari variation a plus i plus m b for some m belongs to z right uh, t can be written like that also i have t belongs to n a b so i will get any an n, n such that t equal to a plus n b which is equal to a plus i plus m b right then what happens then you can see if you rearrange this a plus i minus a equal to n minus m times b you will get it so basically if you uh, simplify you will get i equal to n minus m times b now note that the b is a positive number and uh, um, n is n cannot be equal to m if n equal to m then i equal to zero that won't happen right so there is only possibility is uh, n is greater than m or n is less than m if n greater than m the right side becomes a uh, value uh, will be greater than or equal to b right if you if you choose n equal to n plus 1 then it will uh, i mean m plus 1 yeah you will get um, it is a b so uh, it is at least b the right side is at least b right i when n if n greater than m i is at least b but that is a contradiction to our fact that our i is uh, less than b it up to b minus 1 only so that's not possible right so also if n less than m what happened then we can see that um, i equal to an, a negative number multiplied by a positive number so that means that is a negative number so i is negative that means i is less than 0 but that's also uh, not possible because i is starting from um, 0 to uh, basically 1 okay so it cannot be 0 right so that is cannot be zero. So that means um, uh, what is not possible? The inclusion is uh, this this, this uh, t belongs to this union is is a wrong assumption. That means t is not belongs to that, right? That proves t is in is that but not in this union. 
that is uh, NAB is a subset of this so one one inclusion is proved okay now another inclusion we need to prove this is a subset of this right yeah. uh, this particular uh, difference of uh, union uh, is that difference uh, the complement of this union is a subset of NAB we have to prove that so um, uh, for that we assume an element y from this um, complement of the union right then uh, what it implies it implies that y belongs to z but y does not belongs to this union right so you see y belongs to z but y does not belongs to this union and um, now i have to prove that y belongs to nab so the essential thing i need to prove is um NAB union, um, this particular union uh, has to be Z. If that happens, then by um, common set theory, we can prove that Y belongs to NAB, right? Because uh, it is in Z, and it is not in here, and the union of NAB and this is a Z, definitely Y belongs to NAB. So now if I can prove this Z equal to, now look at the index, it's not, not starting from 1, it's starting from 0, then only I'll get A plus 0 AB, that is NAB will come inside this union. So I equal to 0 to B minus 1, NA plus IB, right? Then I can prove that Y belongs to NAB. So how do I prove this fact? So one inclusion here is very trivial because uh, this is a union of subsets of Z. So definitely this is contained in Z is trivial case, right? So zero to B minus one NA plus I B subset of Z that is very trivial. The other thing we have to prove, I have to prove Z is a subset of that union. Then we can prove Z equal to that. So if Z is a subset of this union, how do you prove that? You take an element T belongs to Z, but it implies if you do a fixed number translation, nothing will happen. T minus A is also belongs to Z. Now let us apply division algorithm with the B positive, right? Then what I'll get, I'll get unique numbers Q and uh, I, right? Uh, such that, so I, I assume it to be I, right? For my uh, easiness of the proof, right? So I'll get Q and I, right? And I is between zero and uh, B, right? Uh, that means 0 to B minus 1 basically. So we can write like this T minus A equal to Q times B plus I, right? I is 0 to B minus 1. And if you write T equal to A plus QB plus I, you can rewrite it. And again, you can rewrite like this A plus I plus QB. So A plus I plus QB means Q is an integer, right? Then I can, um, I can immediately tell that a t is belongs to n a plus i b because q is an integer it is of the form um, the this form a plus i plus n b or q b something like that okay so now um, i can vary from 0 to b minus 1 so i can just if i am randomly taking an integer t i can just say that um, i only know that it belongs to at least one of these i right uh, uh, yeah, but i don't know that i so what i am clearly say I can say that this belongs to the union of 0 to b minus 1 because i is varies from where 0 to b minus 1. So I can surely say that t belongs to the, this union 0 to b minus 1 and a plus ib. And uh, so it is done because we started from z and we proved that this z is subset of this union. Already this is subset of this. So they are equal. And we have our uh, element is in z right but not in that union from 1 to uh, uh, b minus 1 that helps to prove that that proves that uh, y belongs to nab right and uh, the zeroth index a plus zero p so it belongs to that okay so we have proved that fact now how do i you how do i use that frag fact okay so what we have proved is nab equal to z difference the union 1 to b minus 1 na plus ib now note that nab is open already right so this is what this is what we have missed before this uh, theorem uh, observation so well let us prove it easily so in order to prove this is open set what i have to prove any element i have to choose from this i have to exhibit an nxy right so let x belongs to nab i choose y equal to b itself right positive number b itself then 
I claim that NXY is a subset of NAB, right? Uh, if I can do this, NAB is open, right? Okay. So for how to how to see this? So let us uh, prove this inclusion, right? So T belongs to NXY. This implies T equal to X plus N dash Y for N dash belongs to Z, right? Because using this fact, and you know that X is already in NAB, so I can write it like A plus NB for some N plus. Um, yeah, so a plus n plus n dash b you get. So what you can see n plus n dash is an element of uh, z. So you can see um, this is a plus n b form. So it belongs to n a b. So fine. So what you have proved for every x in n a b you will get a y which is b. You can choose. Uh, there you can prove that it is belongs to NAB, so NAB is open set. So NAB is open, right? Yeah. So what we have to prove is NAB is closed as well, right? So for that, you you know that the, the union of open sets are open, right? So here it is a union of open sets, and uh, this is an open set, right? And it, this is a complement of an open set, right? Z minus an open set is a complement of open, open set. That means it is a closed set. So right hand is closed set. So NAB is a closed set, right? So NAB is closed as well. So NAB is open and NAB is closed. We use the idea of closedness, right? Yeah. Okay. Now we have proved NAB is closed. Now with the, uh, we are right. Um, the end of the proof. Now we choose. Uh, we know that n equal to plus or minus one. Then that is uh, that has no uh, prime factors, right? Yeah. So, but every n not is not plus or minus one has a prime divisor p in p, right? A prime divisor p in p. So, what is the meaning of that? It belongs to n zero p, right? Is that okay? n has a prime fact, prime divisor p that means n belongs to n zero p what is n zero p zero plus n p it's it is a uh, basically it is p z right so that n belongs to p z that is true right n p plus so n belongs to n p so if you take every n not plus or minus one then definitely that n will um, belongs to the union of n p right yeah. So is that difference plus or minus one equal to the union of p belongs to p and o p, right? That's what we can we will get. Now this result is very important. So if p were finite, what happens? This is a finite union of closed sets. This is what we have proved. N a b is closed. Say n o p is closed. So this is the finite union of closed set, right? Yeah. That means finite union of closed set is closed. That means what? Is that difference? This is closed, right? So it's a complement of plus or minus one is closed, and that proves plus or minus one is a open, right? Plus or minus one open. But we know that it is a finite set, but it contradicts the fact that every non-empty uh, open set is infinite, right? That means p cannot be the script p cannot be finite. That is p is infinite. Okay, so go through the proof very clearly, then you will understand it clearly. Thank you.